Hi, in this video we're covering how to assemble and lodge your SDP report with the ATR. We covered how to do the setup and create a dataset file in an earlier video. As mentioned on our website, all lodgements are made through singletouch.com.au who are an SDP sending service provider. So you'll first need to register your ABN with them. For the purposes of this video, we will assume you've already done that. We'll start by showing the processing of the payroll in MyOB. Click Process Payroll on this screen and enter the dates as usual. Make a note as you'll need these dates for later on. So our payroll period started on the 4th of April, finished on the 10th of April and payment date is the 11th of April. So I'm going to now click Next. Uh, make a note of the net pay figure here just as a reference point. As all our pays are already checked so I'll just click record. Again you'll see this net payment amount here. Do what else you need to do and then close my up. We now need to run STP Creator which I've already opened. We start this time by opening the dataset file for MOB that we've previously created. So we go to the dataset screen and rather than creating a new one, we click Browse and select the one that we've previously created. You'll be prompted to select a username from the list and enter the password. This can be the, where the hint might come in handy. You'll see the company file details are already on this screen and here you can see that the current MIB data is not yet loaded. So let's click this button. Provide our login information and then click OK. Our latest payroll data has now been loaded. This section here gives you a summary. The important thing to note is that the number of payroll categories and payees in the data set match the numbers in the MIB file. So there's the numbers in the data set and there's the numbers in the MIB file. If not, you will be alerted to the fact and you might need to make some changes. For example, you may have added a new payroll category in your MIB file since you created this data set file, so you need to update that area. In our case, there are no changes in MIB since we set up this data set file, so we simply click Save and Close. On this main screen, we now need to assemble all our data. Start by clicking Assemble Year-to-Date Data. This screen shows all year-to-date data for each payee on a payroll category basis. So every payroll category for John Smith is here showing the year-to-date totals. As this screen is being loaded, STP Creator checks that all payroll categories have been mapped and will alert you if there's an issue. In this case there are no alerts, so we can quickly scan the data and click Save to go to the next step. Now we need to click Assemble W1 and W2 data. First we need to set the dates and these dates should correspond to the dates we used in MIAB when doing payroll. Set the first day of the pay period to the 4th of April, the last day to the 10th and payment date is the 11th. Now we can click OK. As this screen is being loaded, STP Creator checks all payroll categories are mapped for W1 and W2 and will alert you if there is an issue. In this case, as there are no alerts, we can simply scan the figures. Remember that the net pay figure from MIB was 3,324 and the difference between these W1 and W2 amounts is 3,324. So this ties in with the MIB data. If there was a discrepancy between these figures, you'd need to double check and ensure everything is correct. There are times when the figures will be different. For example, when there was a deduction taken out of an employee's pay. However, in this vanilla case, this did not happen and so the net figure in the STP Creator agrees with our MIAB net figure amount. So when finished scanning this, click Save. As you can see, now that we have completed the above steps, this assemble lodgement data is now available for us. So click this button. This table now shows us the final data to be sent to the ATO. You can see here we have four payees. 
and as we scroll across we can see the gross pay amounts, the employee tax and the super guarantee. All of these are year-to-date totals. If we scroll down to the very back we can see two of them have a car allowance. While we are here I'd like to point out a few things about this screen. None of these apply here and they'll be covered in another video. First we have the update checkbox. This is used when sending an update. An update assumes you've already reported a payroll event and you'd now like to update the ATO records. For example, at the end of the year when finalising payment summaries, you send an update event. Full file replacement checkbox is when you want to replace a successfully lodged report in its entirety. TFN declaration is used when reporting a TFN declaration, for example when a new employee starts. Final indicator is used to notify the ATO that all payroll data for an employee is final, for example at the end of the year after the last payday, or if an employee leaves partway through the year you can indicate this employee has received his final payment. This screen also shows the W1, W2 amounts to be reported, the payment date and a summary of the other amounts. For your peace of mind you can generate a payroll register report from MIAB and check these figures. It might be a good idea for the first few times to do this, just ensure everything is set up correctly. Remember, STP Creator will only report what you have told it to report based on the settings you have selected in the data set file. It is important to check that you have all these settings set up correctly and haven't missed something or excluded something that should be included. After scanning the information and you're satisfied it's correct, we're now ready to lodge the STP report. Click this Lodge button. This will bring up the sign in screen. Read this the following and tick I declare. As you can see, your username has been inserted as the person making the declaration. And now you can click Sign In. A pop up will soon appear. If not, ensure STP Creator is allowed through your firewall. STP Creator requires an active internet connection. Now, this is a secure login to the singletouch.com.au portal. You need to enter your email address and password that you have registered with this sending service provider. Click Sign In. If you see this screen, simply click Retry as STP Creator was suspended while waiting for a token from the login screen. You'll then see successfully signed in here, as well as some secure token information here, which you can ignore. You will also notice the Send button has now enabled, so let's click Send. You'll get a response here in this message section. There you go, Success. This confirms our STP event has been successfully submitted. If there is a problem with any of the data, the send will fail. Make a note of any message, click this copy button and paste it into Notepad or Word. You need to go back, correct what needs to be corrected and then try resending again. After a successful send, you will soon receive an email advising whether or not the ATO accepted your lodgement. This email will advise accepted, partially accepted or rejected. If your report was partially accepted or rejected, the email will also advise why. You will need to correct the issue and resend. We can now close this screen. Finally, we recommend saving all this data just in case there's an issue later on, at least for the first few times. Click here, Save Image File. This will save a read-only image file with the file name matching the pay event ID. This is the reference the ATO will use if there's an issue. This reference is also saved in your dataset file as well as audit log. So click Save. We can now close this screen. Once the STP data is processed, you can log into your singletouch.com.au portal and view a report of the submitted data. Your employees will also see their payment year-to-date 
details when they log into their MyGov account. If there's an error or a problem, remember that your next STP report will replace all the earlier reports and so you can correct any errors next time. At the end of the year, when you have submitted your final STP report, you can indicate that this is the final one for the year. This is when the data gets locked in as a payment summary. We'll cover this in another video. We can now close this program.